Well, hello there, you scum lords, and welcome to a message that I have kind of put together for Gaijin. This is sort of a co-op response to Fly Daily's, I guess you could say, rant video that he put out a couple of days ago on Tuesday or Monday. I can't remember exactly which one it was off the top of my head. Doesn't matter. Anyways, if you guys haven't seen Fly's video yet, he basically is speaking directly to Gaijin here, and I also want to preface this with, by saying that I am not going to swear during this video to allow this video to be spread as far as possible. Anyways, Fly said in his video that Gaijin essentially wasn't developing game modes for, or he was calling out Gaijin for a lack of development as far as game modes were concerned for War Thunder. Now this technically applies, although I, he mostly meant Tank RB, this also applies to Air RB. Which I know sounds strange coming from me, who's mostly a tanker. However, this this same argument was brought up by people like McChicken Bites no more than a couple of months ago. And so it's 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 finally all starting to come to a head for most of us content creators and much of the community. We're kind of sick of what we have right now. We we love the new content, we love the new vehicles. But it feels like a lot of these old problems are just being ignored, and they're trying to be fixed by just throwing more stuff on top of it. And, unfortunately, just ignore- I, I, while Gaijin may not be ignoring them, that's certainly what it seems like on our end. So yes, the main problem here is that new game modes have not come into, uh, in, into use, as far as RB is concerned, for both tanks and planes. We've seen a lot of development in other areas, like warships, new tech trees, uh, World War mode is coming out, and technically that is a game mode, but that is mostly a that is mostly uh, Gaijin's copy of World of Tanks' Clan Wars. Now, while you can't, they say you can play it individually, and we don't exactly know how that's going to work yet. Uh, World War mode is not something that everybody's going to play. World War Mode is very much a niche game mode. It's for a selective group of competitive people. Unfortunately, that is the truth. And I can guarantee that while Gaiju may have a, a large flux of people initially coming into World War Mode, how many people actually stay there is completely dependent on what they end up doing as far as rewards are concerned. Going back to RB, though, there were two potential game modes that RB that could have really shaken up RB and uh, RB aircraft and RB tanks. As far as RB aircraft is concerned, RB enduring confrontation was a big one. I see this quite often that many aircraft players would say that they would gladly play aircraft far more often if enduring confrontation was a thing. For, our, for realistic battles, because it is a very, very successful system in Simulator. And we've seen it a handful of times in RB, and when it does come up, you can't get a game in RB aircraft. You just simply can't, especially for the nations involved. Because they're all gone playing this cool game mode that is far more interesting than anything the aircraft have. Going over to tanks on the uh, as well, the only other quote-unquote game mode that we've seen tested is a new spawn point system. And that was tested for a short while, only for simulator battles in mind, and we haven't heard anything since. Now this is pretty common for Gaijin, they, they, they hype up this new thing that they're testing out and then we hear nothing from it after, uh, after it's all said and done. Now granted, it does take time to analyze data, and I'm not I'm not paying the, I'm not uh, bashing the developers for for not working. What I'm bashing the developers for is a lack of communication with the community at, when, in regards to these modes. Uh, they're not telling us what exactly they're working on. They're just telling us we're working on something. Now, to a certain degree, I understand why they need to keep certain things secret for or at least under an NDA for a period of time, but. At the same time, there is a major lack of communication with the developer, with, with the community. And really, they have no good excuse for that. I mean, Fortnite is a great example. The reason why Fortnite is doing so well is because the developers are actively talking with the community every single day. 
Now, while Fortnite may have a slightly bigger staff than Gaijin, I don't know that for sure, but that's my guess, there's no excuse why Fortnite can do this. A game that, especially the Battle Royale, which is a free-to-play model, and Gaijin can't. There is no reason for it. Even the language barrier shouldn't be that much of an issue. There are plenty of people around the world who speak English or speak Western dialects. It shouldn't be that difficult to get a larger, uh, a larger sense of communication with Moscow or wherever they are based. But going back to the game modes, next thing I want to talk about are the issues that we have with the current game modes specifically. And the two I am talking about are Conquest and Domination. Now, I'm sure many of you who are frequent uh, watchers of this channel are going, oh, here he goes about Conquest and Domination again. But it's true. <laughs> Con I am a firm believer in the fact that Conquest and Domination need to be removed from the game entirely. And the reasons for this are quite simple. The main one being that they are not conducive to balanced gameplay. And I am mostly talking about those vehicles who specialize in defensive or passive gameplay. Now, while nobody likes to see their, their brawling heavy tank sitting in the corner of the map doing absolutely nothing for their team, on another hand, there are certain vehicles that are designed to sit in the back of the map and provide support to their team. They are not leading the charge, they are sitting behind a, def a prepared defensive position and ready to take on all comers and cover an area. And there is a certain role for that, and certain vehicles fulfill that role really well. The vehicles I'm talking about mainly are Chieftain, all variants, Conqueror, M103, and Object 120. There are plenty of other vehicles out there, but these are the biggest examples, and they also mostly apply to high to mid to high tiers. Low tiers, not so much of a big and not so big of an issue. However, the current game modes of Conquest and Domination actively punish their playstyles. And the reason for this is that because in order to win, you are forced to capture a chalked circle on the map, just drawn randomly in arbitrary points on the map. These vehicles are, are then forced to leave their defensive positions where they are so effective and forced to play themselves in a way that is not ideal for the, for the vehicle's construction. The Chieftain has a very, very weak lower plate. It's so weak that you can penetrate it with some of the tier 1s and, and most of the tier 2s. Can penetrate the lower plate of a chieftain without an issue. Now you take this chieftain which has a very very weak hull armor and you put it in a position where it's exposing that plate of those weaknesses all the time i.e in a close range brawl fight. While it may have the gun and it may have some of the turret armor to uh, withstand a withstand an engagement that close the hull armor is a constant huge weak spot and it destroys the chieftain most of the time. The Conqueror is very much the same way, except for the upper plate is, is also just as good, if not better. The lower plate on it is horrible, the side armor is horrible, <laughs> and it means that unless you are facing anybody head-on, in a and you're in a hold-down position, they're gonna have a field day with you. You don't have the rate of fire, you don't have the damage, you don't have, you, you don't even really have the, the consistency of penetration to deal with most targets and come out on top. The M103 is in a slightly better position, but that's only because the its shells do a ton of damage. And the M103 is also in a very similar situation to the Conqueror. If unless it's doing, um, unless it is sitting straight head on with an enemy, it's going to die and it's going to die very quickly. It is simply not, both vehicles are simply not set up for close range engagements where hitting their weak spots is very, very easy to do. They're far more tough and far better stuck back in the second or third line, engaging targets from very long range and picking them off one by one. And a lot of people don't seem to understand this. Part of the reason why I'm doing my gun tank concept videos. But anyways, part of that problem is exacerbated by these two game modes, which force players to these arbitrary points on the map, which generally hold no tactical or strategic value to the outcome of the game. As far as if those points weren't there, how, how much would they affect the game? And most of the time they don't. There's a couple of cases where they do, but those are few and far between. As an example, in an ideal world, if those cap circles were not there when we were playing a game mode like Battle, you wouldn't go to that little peninsula on Ash River. What you would do is you would go to the hill just south, uh, or, or not Ash River, uh, Poland. That little peninsula north of the lake, you would never go there. Because all you're doing is giving the guys on the, uh, on the south side of the lake, up on the cliff, easy kills. Because you're, you're forced to expose your side armor to that flank. Nobody would ever go there. And this is true for quite a few of the maps. There are, there are so many maps that 
people only go to certain portions of the map because they have to or they lose, as opposed to going to certain portions of the map because they are important tactical and strategic positions to hold in the midst of a battle. And that is my biggest gripe with Conquest and Domination, the fact that they force players to go to places that generally don't make sense. On top of that, what it also causes, especially in the case of Conquest, is forces players to go to a certain point on the map and completely ignore everything else. Now, while you can say on Abandoned Factory, for example, if you're playing on Conquest and the and the Northern uh, Tractor Factory is a or Machining Factory is uh, the objective, you still see people on both teams spawn and go to the uh, in, and go to the train yard in the south. The problem with doing that is, despite the fact that the train yard is the best place to go, if you don't go to that Abandoned Machine Factory in the north, you're going to lose. It's that simple. And that sort of gameplay is unbalanced, it's not fair, and it, it creates more problems, problems than it's worth. Also, it dramatically makes the map smaller. Like, at that point, you might as well not have the others, and then we see what we see Gaijin doing is because people tend to congregate in these certain areas, they tend to just shrink the maps to those particular areas, which, again, is, is a terrible idea, because <laughs> then all you're doing is forcing is forcing players who didn't want to go to that area in the first place or didn't want to be forced to go to that area in the first place now they all have to come to that area the, even like the players who did want to go there great they go to the they go to the spot that they like but for everybody else it's not worth it and it's not fun for it's not fun for a majority of those people there are always a, a few select people who enjoy that sort of thing but i can tell you that a vast majority of people don't care or don't want uh, these tiny 1v1 maps essentially. Where you want those types of maps are in competition, like serious competition, squadron battles, world war mode, esports. That's kind of where you want to, where the teams are much smaller and much more elite. You want those teams to be forced to fight each other. That's different. In random battles where it's just 16 random players versus 16 random players, shrinking the maps down is very much counterintuitive. Okay, moving on here. How to improve some of these maps. Now, I mentioned that Conquest and Domination need to be removed. Battle uh, battle needs to stay. Break needs to stay. And Battle is, again, the two you get these two points, and if you capture the enemy point, it ends the game. There are a few maps, such as Finland. Finland is a great example of this, where you've got two cap circles directly in the middle of the map. You then create the same issue that you had beforehand with the Domination and Conquest maps forcing players to go to disadvantageous positions just so they could say they won the game. And I'm going to be the first one, I'm, not, I'm sure I'm not the first one to say that simply capturing a, a white circle on the ground in the middle of, in the, middle of the map that without having taken any real strategic point uh, or not overrunning the enemy positions does not constitute a victory in real life. Oh yeah, you, hold, you held that, you held this hill for 15 minutes. Congratulations. What have you achieved in the overall strategic thinking? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> so, from both a realism perspective, a tactical perspective, and a strategic perspective, most of these game modes do not make sense, especially when, they, when the objectives are plopped right in the center of the map. What we should have are more fluid objectives, such as, I'm going to take that hill because it offers me the best firing position over X area. Rather than, I'm going to take this uh, this circle at the bottom of the hill because that's what the game is telling me to do. Now that I think about it, what I'm mostly asking for is a, a sort of team deathmatch game mode. Something that allows every single vehicle to play in the way it, in the way it's supposed to, or in the way it's best suited, and then reward the player base for doing so, rather than punishing them for doing what the vehicle is designed to do. Moving on to... The, the the last couple of things here map rotation now this is gonna be very short because gaijin has already said that they're going to address the map rotation at higher tiers which is good because there are about approximately four maps that are just on rotation at high tiers and believe me i love some of these maps but they get really annoying after you've played them for the seventh or eighth time in a row i love maginot line but i don't want to play it five times in a row i i don't understand how that slipped the gap so gaijin have already addressed that they are going to be fixing this I, I believe they recently just dropped Corellia back into the top tier rotation, and that is a horrible map for top tiers. Like, both of the spawns in each case can shoot each other right at the start, which is a terrible way to balance your map. It's a terrible map design. All you're asking for is people to just sit in their spawns, be afraid to move anywhere, and if they do move anywhere, then they risk being blown up right at the start of the game. 
That is a terrible map design. Even at low tiers, it's terrible. What I propose is that you use larger maps. El Alamein is a good example. There's a credible variety on El Alamein. El Alamein is a great map. More Fulda, Maginot Line, more maps like those, where you have where you have options. You can go do the long range sniping, you can go do the medium range combat, or you can go do the close range combat. Those are the ideal maps. And don't shrink them either. Simply create game modes based around their side. Whether that means in making it a team deathmatch game mode and simply increasing the, the amount of players in a game, that would really go a long way to making those large maps more enjoyable for some people. If there's more targets to shoot at, then they're not worried about and they're not worrying about driving across a map for 10-15 minutes uh, before they see an enemy contact. They're they're looking around for enemy contacts. So maybe increasing the player size might help. There are a multitude of solutions that can help here. Uh, also, if you're going to do battle game modes, keep the keep the bases close enough to the spawn that a team that is uh, that a team that is spawning nearby can get to that cap circle but not close enough so that it's really, really easy for one team to just go and spawn camp another. Which, uh, again, a lot of these maps suffer from. So Now it's gotten better. Uh, you're not seeing as many tank, as many enemy vehicles behind your spawn due to the recent addition to the kill area or to the um, out-of-bounds area for an opposite team for a lot of these maps. But that needs to be implemented across the board for every map. And it needs to happen soon, if not yesterday. <laughs> So, overall, Conquest and Domination need to be replaced. Battle needs to be further developed into something that's far more fun. Maybe maybe make unlimited spawns and make turn it into a team deathmatch game mode. I think that would be far more fun for everybody involved. Continue developing Enduring Confrontation or, or and introduce it for RB uh, aircraft, for crying out loud. Give the propeller heads something to be excited about for once, outside of X new plane that, only built, that they only built two of because it's quote-unquote a super prop. It, focus on revamping the current game modes we have and get rid of the ones that are not conducive to balanced gameplay. So, that being said, and having, I think, pretty clearly stated my position on this, and hopefully this gets to the developers, as you can tell, I have not swore during this video, so please share this as much as you want on the forums or on the live.warthunder website or on Reddit or so on. Get the message out. Make sure that this gets to the developers. Make sure that both of these videos get to the developers or any other videos similar to this get to the, to the developers. It's important that they hear that we are not satisfied with what they have done in terms of, or what they haven't done in terms of game modes so far. So without further ado, if you guys have any other suggestions or ideas, please leave them down in the comment section below. Let's create a discussion about this. Let's talk about it. it what other good ideas do you guys have that you could bring forth to Gaijin and possibly have them implement and create a really, really fun experience for all of us? So without further ado, this has been Many Miles Away. Keep your tracks checked, keep your bindings in place, keep around on the tube, and I will see you guys in the next video.